Well, for more on anti-recidivism programs, I'm joined by James P. Anderson. He's the co-founder of ARC, the anti-recidivism coalition based in LA. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, UK-based Street to Boardroom is a grassroots community-level program that channels skills used on the streets for illegal purposes into legal enterprises. What sort of impact could these types of organizations have on curbing recidivism? I mean, these programs are essential for curbing recidivism. You're looking at a population of people that are coming home with a lack of resources, a lack of opportunity, and oftentimes a lack of guidance. They're coming from broken families. So programs like this are able to help, in a sense, provide guidance that was never given to them in the beginning, even as children. So then what do you think are some of the key factors that are likely to lead to reoffending and recidivism? Uh, well, this is one of our biggest efforts here in California and the United States. Is it, There's a lot of laws that immediately put people 10 steps back, such as coming home and not being able to find housing, uh, regulations that make it mandatory to reveal that you have a criminal record so that you don't get jobs, um, and the inability to go to community college because you lose your ability to uh, apply for financial aid. So when you have some of these community programs, what needs to happen to really amplify their impact? I mean, we really need to have voices uh, really begin to take part in this. So, you know, we've luckily been able to begin to build a coalition of actors and other people that are inf influencers in order to champion this cause because it's so important but the truth is, is very few people know what's happening with their criminal justice system in their backyards. So how important then is education about what's happening in the justice system to really help pre prevent some of this recidivism we're seeing? I mean it's huge right I mean I think uh, when the public is duly educated on what's going on and the amount of money that's being wasted on a system that is failing 70 percent of the time I mean there's no not one business in the world that would be kept running if it failed 70 percent of the time except our prison system um so i mean education within and without uh, helps people not recidivate because education is one of the most important factors second to building a, a community because a lot of people that are coming home are really just looking for that community uh support that they often lack growing up so when we look at some examples of countries that are seeing success with anti-recidivism programs what is it that they're doing right you know what? <laughs> it's an entire perspective change. When you're looking at like Germany and Sweden, their entire approach to incarceration is different. Where their constitution looks at prison as a place for re-socialization, uh, many countries that have it wrong, including the U.S., start off by saying prison's purpose is for punishment. Now, what about some of the ways that prisons can better prepare inmates while they're in prison so that they can support themselves, especially since we know that th there's this perceived marketability when it comes to employers once people are released? 100%. So I want to make it clear that prison itself never helps anyone. It's proven studies. I mean, solitary confinement, proven as torture. There's so many different things that we could go into. It, it, prison itself doesn't help, but the programs, if you're able to get people programs to help them get ready for jobs while they're in there, job placement, job readiness, if you're able to help people deal with the trauma that they're dealing with and any mental illnesses, and if you're able to bring education, and these are programs inside the prison that could truly transform someone's life. And, um, you know, and come home, and, and I'll tell you this, we help get tons of our men and women employed, and all of the employers are always so happy with their performance because these are individuals that are dying for an opportunity to work. Now, it's interesting because you talk about the programs within prisons, and we know that prisons themselves are big business. For example, the UK has one of the strongest economies in the world, but also one of the largest prison populations. Mm. Is there enough incentive for prisons to make anti-recidivism a priority, given the profits involved? I definitely think so. When you look at it from a just a straightforward fiscal perspective, it's, it's clear that prisons are sucking away money that can be better used in different areas. Um, but we also have to look at the long history of prisons and why they exist in the beginning, which is a, is a much more complex conversation. Now, give us some context here. What's the long-term economic impact of not addressing recidivism, of, of allowing this to continue? I mean, I think just some numbers are, are, are just kind of staggering to look at. If we're looking at California alone, that spends about 12 or $13 billion a year on just the state system. We're looking at, for each person that's incarcerated, it's about fifty dollars to $68,000 to keep them incarcerated. That's enough to send them to Harvard for a year. Now, if we look at juveniles, it costs $189,000 a year to keep one juvenile incarcerated. Uh, if you could just imagine what we could do with that if we reinvested it in the community in, in the right way.
certainly food for thought. Thank you so much for your insights, James P. Anderson, co-founder of ARC, the Anti-Recidivism Coalition.